I'm back with another plane. This one here is an absolute bucket of rust. Look how pretty this thing is. I've done nothing to this thing yet. I haven't even soaked it with oil. I'm going to try and get it apart without oil. I don't know how that's going to work. And then we'll oil everything up after we take it apart. So this plane is a 1929 Stanley Bailey, type 14, size 4. So this was made for a grand total of one year, uh, 1929 to 1930, and that's it. If you notice, this one's got a big dial here, where uh, the last one of the planes I put together, let me grab it real quick. So this is a much older plane here. This one's from about 1870. This dial is much smaller here. Opposed to this one, it's a nice big dial. This one actually has a, a different knob on the front. These originally came with a very low knob, or like this one. The problem with these low knobs is that when you grab here, see how my thumb is hitting? This one here, my thumb is clear. It's a problem with the old planes, these low knobs lead to kind of knuckle damage. And this one is kind of right in the middle. It's not quite as tall as the older one, but it is taller than the real one. So yeah, this one's a 1912 or something like that. Um, not a huge, so Rockford, which everything was made by Stanley, so But anyway, yeah, let's put this back. We're getting into taking this one apart. So first of all, they, they nickel plated these and changed the design slightly. Let me grab an old one. So if we look at these two, they're similar. This one's got a kidney shaped cutout. And what that does is as you're tightening and or um, put moving the blade in and out. In the old ones, that screw will actually slide down and the, this will end up popping off while you're using it, which is pretty bad. So what they did is came up with this kidney shaped design that kind of holds the, the screw in place. So that's one big difference between these two planes. So that came off easily, but the reason this looks as nice as it does is because as well as changing the design, they started nickel plating these because nickel holds up better to rust. There's a few spots on it. You may be able to see here, but overall, planes from the like the early 1930s tend to have the uh, front clamp in pretty good shape. This chip breaker looks pretty good. The blade is a mess. And you can see the way this was sharpened. Somebody put an arch on it. And what that does is it, it allows the center of the blade to come out through the mouth more than the edges, which is really what you want. Um, you should be able to run the plane along an edge and not even hit the blade. Then in the middle, you should take a small shaving. It prevents gouges and lines in your, in your wood. So this looks pretty good, other than being covered in rust and spider webs. Ugh. So maybe oil without oil is a bad idea. Oh, okay. Might as well take this all the way out. Holds that. Yeah, the chip breaker looks like it's in good shape. Awesome. This. Ooh. 
So that edge is going to need some work. It's going to have to be completely ground. So that's, that's a lot of work. Because I don't have a grinding machine. So now I'll try to... Oh, these are loose. That's, that's nice. It's always easier when things are loose. Should just lift straight up. So I just, yeah, it did. Two little frog screws. Here's the frog. This is in good shape too. I know it's crazy, but this is in good shape. But yeah, I don't see any cracks. I don't see anything. This spins nice. It's funny, these are, um, these are threaded backwards, so it's like righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. But when you're actually putting it, when the blade is working, turning it to the right moves the blade in. Turning it to the left moves the blade out. Some brass knob, pretty bad shape. This screw here usually gives you trouble because it's it never gets taken out of your oh, yeah oh, yeah so that's in good shape and that's all I'm going to do to the frog. Well, no, it isn't. I get this. This usually, yep, just hand tight with this one. So that's all I'm going to do to this. I really can't take this out without pushing a pin through. And then I would have to replace that pin. Same with this. This has a rivet holding it to the back. That's going to need some oil. So, might as well do that now. And, let's finish getting this out. This adjustment pin here. Now this attaches to the frog, and this attaches to the, the plain body. This slips over this. So as you tighten this, or loosen it, it's pulling this whole frog in and out just a little bit. That controls how far into the mouth your blade sticks. All right, now for the fun stuff. So again, this has a crack. I can see glue on it, so I know that's probably been repaired. There is a big chunk missing here. The front knob looks like it's in great shape. And let's start with that one. Okay, that moved pretty easily. Okay, so this is stuck on the end, which is going to be probably no fun. To be perfectly honest, I may just not even deal with taking this off to clean everything. I'm not looking for a museum quality restoration, just looking to be able to use something. So this will get shined up nice and brassy. Probably never take it off the post though. Well, that was awful stuck there. So this knob is in great shape. You can see how old this wood is. A little paint splatter on it. Should be able to clean this up nice. We finish that. Not 100% sure what kind of wood this is. I'll have to look into it. Uh, could be rosewood. Could be cherry. Let's 
take this back screw out. Okay, that whole thing came out. So, well, that's a different looking thing. Oh, this is cross threaded. I don't know if you can see that, but somebody cross-threaded that when they fixed the handle, so that's probably not coming off either. Do I care? Nope. So yeah, this handle's in okay shape, other than this little piece missing. I'm sure I can figure out some way to do that. Probably just some wood filler or maybe some epoxy. Anyway. Let's take a look at the, the body of it. And pray for no cracks. It did come from the church, so I'm sure that it doesn't have any cracks. It's really neat. Not bad. I mean, it's it's rough. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of rust on this. Now this stuff here is flaking off pretty good. So I'll get what I can off of there, and then probably just it. Well, it depends on how much of that comes off when I clean it. If too much comes off, I'm just going to use some black um, black and enamel paint so yeah I don't see any cracks I don't see anything at all looks like a good candidate for becoming very shiny yeah let's see I'll show you something else interesting really not as interesting as I thought, but maybe on this side of the bottom it's easier to tell. Nope. But if we look at these, they're close. So this one was made in about 19... a little bit later you can tell if you look at the sidewalls here see how thin this is compared to this it's one of the ways you can tell the date of the casting so this is a much later casting they also introduced this little raised edge for the, the tote a little bit later on this one's just flat straight across um, this little rim in the front here is something that they did got right around 1900 the older, I've got one that this one here does not have that. This one's actually a keen cutter, which is, I mean, it's the same thing. It's made by Stanley. Everything was Stanley back then. Just sold under different names. So, yeah, we're going to try and get this looking like this.